Well, hello. Uh, I am just, I probably can't see it there, that last cardinal buoy there, the southern cardinal buoy, is the last buoy of the um, breast infrastructure, the Goulet breast. So I'm just uh, clearing that, heading out toward the ocean, uh, toward the open ocean, and um, and soon I'll be crossing what is probably one of the busiest TSSs in the world, frankly. Uh, it's the um, the mouth, the door, the doorway to the English yeah, Channel. I'll show you that later. It's probably be quite busy. Um, for those of you who always complain about it, since I'm going to be out at sea for quite a while now, I've taken off the fenders. I have to tell you that uh, together the uh, ten fenders, and then clean up, tidy up the six uh, mooring lines, uh, three on, on both sides. Uh, that probably took me 20 minutes, you know, 20 minutes uh, of just floating around uh, before I got to go. Anyway, now one of the things I wanted to try this time, if you look at the lazy bag, this I picked up from my good friend James from the YouTube site, Samingo Sales. Uh, James, on his trip last year to the Azores, he always uh, folded up his uh, lazy bag and the lazy jacks so I've taken the lazy jacks and I've streamlined them against the mast and I've I, I just used bungee cord to tie up the lazy lazy uh, bag for sure it looks much nicer um, but the you know where the challenge then comes well so why do you want to do that first of all when you have your lazy jack out those lines rub against the sail uh, especially where the uh, battens are and they can wear them out. You can't see it very well, but up on the, the very top one here, below the numbers, um, where the where the lazy jack was rubbing against the uh, the batten there that has uh, worn through on both sides. Now this is an old sail. It's got the sail is 11 years old now, um, so it's probably on its last major uh, passage. But anyway, I'll give this a try. When so then, what do you do when you need to uh, reef? Well, you see the grommets in the sail there. You can, you can drop it and then tie, put a, a reef line and did a reef knot through those and just tie them around the boom as well. That's, <laughs> that's probably a, a bit too much for me. So if I have a feeling that I'm going to need to reef, what I'll probably do is um, drop the, uh, is, is just uh, use the uh, lazy jacks again with the lazy bag up and keep the lazy jacks as loose as I can so they don't rub against the, the sail too much. This is a stressful part of the departure. This is known as a DST in French, Dispositif de Separation de Trafic, which is TSS, Traffic Separation Scheme in English. And I'm going across it. You can see all the traffic that, 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 that we have there. And one of them is very close to a collision with me. Now here's, here's the challenge. This is the end of the Traffic Separation Scheme, right there. So technically, this is open water. Uh, now, <laughs> I just put on the engine. Here's what my strategy is: is this part here where people are converging to go go in? I'm going to motor across it, motor sail across it, and the same thing here. And normally, I respect the collision regulations religiously. And the the sail, sailing vessel is a stand-on vessel, so be it. But here, is this a is this a channel or not? Obviously, when you're if you're in the channel, you either need not to impede the, their way or to cross it at a 90 degree angle. But here I'm outside of it, so I'm kind of in a gray area. So my strategy is I will act as though I am the giveaway vessel. So if any, and I, I've got one that's very close here now that I need to go uh, take action on. I'm going to take just a second to explain what happened in the traffic separation scheme. I wasn't actually in the traffic separation scheme. I was crossing bef right before the entrance of it, oh, three or four miles, uh, maybe even more. Uh, and you've heard me many times on my videos. I said I, I really hate this myth that sailboats must always give way to uh, big ships. That's a dangerous, dangerous myth. Uh, follow the rules. In this case, I saw this long stream of vessels heading into the. Uh, traffic separation scheme and another stream heading out and I said well okay this time I'll consider myself to be in a seaway and I will give way to the greatest extent possible I'll see what I can do 
So the first one that comes along is a tanker, and this, so this is me cutting across the, the entrance to the traffic separation scheme. And I see the tanker, so I turned slightly to pass so that I would pass just behind him. And three seconds after I turned, I even remember his call sign, he barked at me on the radio. Isabel, this is tanker 15. This is tanker 15. Maintain course and speed. I repeat, maintain course and speed. So I turned back and he turned, immediately he turned to pass behind me. And the real embarrassment out of that was then the French controller who's responsible for those water passages, he called me on the radio and said, Isabel, this is a French controller. Uh, do you understand your instructions to maintain course and speed? Quel honte. So, message that I already know to self Follow the rules as they are written. This is a myth that sailboats must always give way to uh, large tanker ships. So after this uh, wonderful start today, leaving Brest, getting across that uh, traffic separation scheme without uh, anything too serious happening, then uh, just a wonderful day of sailing. Gentle breeze, uh, five knots speed over ground, and that's more than that. So the big question is, at sunset, Will I see that magical rayon vert, the green ray? I'm going to film some, see if we catch one. Well, good morning. We're out of the shallow now. I left France 24 hours ago. I did uh, 135 nautical miles in the, in the first 24 hours, which is average. Not, not great, but not bad either. The wind is not real heavy. It's supposed to pick up a little later. Wonderful, peaceful night. Uh, just, just lovely out here charging up the North Atlantic and I'll soon be entering the Celtic Sea. Well, more about my uh, passage later. Now it's time for some breakfast, which today is French toast, pain perdu, and bacon. Mmm. Can you smell that bacon? Good stuff. Good evening. It's about uh, 2100 uh, and uh, after a very uneventful routine day. I love those. Uh, nothing exciting to report. Uh, just sailing all day long up through the Celtic Sea, uh, Celtic Sea to, towards uh, Ireland. So I just thought I'd give you a little bit of a flavor for life inside. Uh, first of all, let me do a, just a really quick check the AIS. I just stuck my head out and looked all around. There's nothing for a range of 24 miles on the AIS. And I looked around, I didn't see any lights either. So, uh, this may surprise you, but when I left uh, France, I actually did not have a destination in mind. I just was gonna aim for Ireland and let the wind decide where I was gonna go. And uh, after a couple of days at sea now, the wind has voted and the wind was uh, favoring uh, landfall on, somewhere here on the western side. So not on the southern coast, but on the western side. Uh, and that's what I've decided to do is I'm, I'm gonna make landfall at a place called Dingle on the western coast, southwest coast of Ireland. So I need to start uh, preparing, uh, doing some of the basics for that. So I've broken out some of the books uh, that I look to I will study very closely now reads and the sailing directions for uh, uh, Ireland, study the charts, look at my uh, uh, Navionics uh, package very well and plan, uh, plan the arrival for Dingle, which is still more than 24 hours away, but I just like to plan that well in, the head, well in advance so I have that in my head. So that's the work I need to do <laughs> for, the, for the mind. But for the spirit, afterwards, I'm going to read, if any of you, ha I'm sure everyone knows Christian Williams, but uh, watching his videos or reading his books, this one uh, on the philosophy of sailings, just brightens up the whole day. It's just the guy is so talented, so intelligent, and so clever, uh, and a great sailor also. So I highly recommend that. So that's what I'm going to do, be reading tonight while I'm on the first watch, the second watch, mid watch, and third watch. I've got all the watches tonight. <laughs> so at sea, this is where I sleep. 
with a, this is called a lee cloth to keep you locked in. Um, when I'm in the port, I, I actually sleep in the forward B, B berth, it's much more comfortable. But this is uh, perfect for when I'm at sea. One other thing that might be of interest is that uh, outside it's about four degrees uh, centigrade. You know, it, it's uh, fairly frisky and it's going to get much colder during the night. So how do I stay warm? Is I have a let me turn the light on here so you can see it. A Webasto heater there. So I turn that heater on and uh, it keeps me warm and cozy inside the the salon. So. Um, that uses it burns the uh, gasoline. It burns diesel about they say between 0.2 and 0.4 liters per hour. The other thing that you need to be aware of is it also uses electricity. And when it starts up, when it's in startup mode, it uses quite a bit of electricity. Um, but then after 15 or 20 minutes, that cuts down uh, dramatically. So that's how I stay warm um, inside the boat is with uh, with the heating system. Well, obviously this would work better with a whisker pole. <laughs> But I'm running wing on wing with my two head sails. And I got the main fully out as well. Well, it's not super elegant. But uh, for those, there were a couple who were asking, when you have a rig where it's attached at the very top, a solent rig or tanquette as we call it in French, uh, you can't run with both sails out at other times. Now a cutter rig would allow me to run with both sails out on different points of uh, wind. But with a Solent rig, or I can only run with both sails out dead downwind. But that's nice. <laughs> is, that, is that any easier than a spinnaker? I'm not sure. Well, here's proof that Isabel has made it safely to Ireland. I'm uh, moored in the harbor of Dingle. Arrived here at 3 o'clock in the morning. A uh, bit of an intimidating approach through a narrow channel. Had, uh, I have to tell you, at 3 o'clock in the morning, pitch black, it was uh, intimidating on the chart, but uh, when you have electronic navigation, you just follow the, the lights and the, the blue path all the way in, and it uh, brought me home. So, I'm safely in Ireland, and you know what that means. There's one thing left to do. Hi, how are you doing? Just fine. How about a glass of Chateau de Pau to do that? I don't got that none of that stuff, but I got one of these for you. Ah, that's perfect. I'll take that instead. Now I'm heading north to Galway, and uh, I'm going to shoot through this sound here called the Sound of Blasket. Uh, I've got my stay sail out go through here look at how flat that sail is boy I love that you know that's just a knife cutting through butter <laughs> and I'm doing six and a half knots right now so I don't know if this shows up on the GoPro but I'm off the coast of Ireland look at those rocks out there you would swear we're in the Faroe Islands that pointed shark fin one over there wow it's a rugged coastline this the west coast of Ireland is very rugged uh, and beautiful, but it lacks uh, infrastructure as opposed to the East Coast, which has lots of marinas and ports and places you can go. Here it's mostly anchorages in protected harbors, but uh, very few uh, formal marina type things. But it's a beautiful place to go. Uh, glad I made the trip. 40 degrees close hauled and 6.4 knots. I would never do that with my old Genoa. Never ever. So that's what that very, very flat, I'll show it to you, capture this very well here. You can see that, that flat sail, looks like I have it. You can see the interference of the wind from the furled Genoa, but I could probably tighten up the, uh, I could probably tighten it up just a little bit with the halyard. But I'll, I won't do that at sea. So I, I really that this this new sail is really giving is really a performance sail in difficult conditions. Wow, it was an unexpectedly rough last night. Really rock and roll. So Isabel and I, we skipped the light fandango, and I was feeling kind of seasick. But 
the wind continued on, and that's when my face, it turned a whiter shade of pale. But all is well now. Things have calmed down very nicely. And I'm only about an hour out from my next port of Galway in Ireland. Galway in an hour. Okay, let's try to go uh, pick up a mooring ball. Fifth on the left, thank you very much. I was looking for it. Tight fit here. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Beautiful. Thank you.